A stark warning by FBI Director Christopher Wray during a hearing on Capitol Hill on Thursday on the elevated terrorist threat as we continue to monitor this morning Iran's unprecedented direct attack on Israel and the implications here at home. The FBI alert coming as over 10 million people have illegally entered the United States on President Biden's watch and nearly 2 million have evaded apprehension altogether and disappeared into the country with no trace of who they are, where they came from or what their intentions are. Already for this fiscal year, 75 people on the FBI's terrorist watch list have been encountered at the southern border, with a total of 342 since October of 2021. Joining me more, uh, now with more on the threats Americans face here at home is the former director of national intelligence, John Ratcliffe. And Director Ratcliffe, it's always a pleasure. Thanks very much for being here this morning. Good morning, Maria. I want to first talk about uh, Iran's direct threat at Israel. 99% of those attacks intercepted. Uh, by Israel and uh, U.S. military. Your thoughts and reaction. I know that you have been on the phone with your former counterparts in Israel. What can you tell us? Well, Maria, the, you know, the word people keep using to describe this attack is uh, unprecedented, and it is, but that's why it's ironic that we find ourselves in uh, the all-too-familiar position of talking about a long list of uh, deterrence failures <clears throat> uh, by the Biden administration. Of course, the failure to deter Vladimir Putin from in, uh, invading Ukraine. And then after the attack uh, on Israel on October the 7th, uh, the failure of the Biden administration with uh, hollow talking points, you know, a single word, don't. And the response to that, um, as you know, was uh, more than 170 attacks on uh, U.S. forces and the deaths of three Americans, uh, dozens of traumatic brain injuries. So clearly not working. And then, you know, which is why I was surprised that those very same um, hollow words and threats from um, the Biden administration don't were used last week uh, after Israel took out IRGC General uh, Mohammed Zahedi, uh, who was the architect of those October 7th attack. And again, it didn't work. An unprecedented attack, 300, uh, you know, drones, missiles, rockets, uh, including cruise missiles and ballistic missiles. <clears throat> so, you know, um, you mentioned the fact that there's been uh, credit given uh, for the good work of the Israelis and the Brits and the Jordanians and the United States in, in reacting to this and shooting down um, most of those threats and minimizing the damage. But, you know, reaction isn't as good as prevention. And Donald Trump was right when he said he would have prevented this. And the Israelis believed that this would have been pre uh, pre uh, prevented. You know, they are, uh, were, I think understandably surprised and upset, as was I, that the seeds for this failure and deterrence took place in Joe Biden's reaction to that hit in Damascus um, on Zahedi, uh, where instead of just remaining silent, the Biden administration quickly came out and said the U.S. was not involved in this. And that sent a message to Iran and to the rest of the world that the U.S. was not with Israel, that the U.S. was a reluctant uh, to support Israel on this. And, you know, and, and that really shows how much fractured this relationship um, has become between the United States uh, and Israel moving forward. And I think that that emboldened Iran, and as one of the, you know, former uh, intelligence officials in Iran said to me last night, uh, you know, with uh, friends like Joe Biden, uh, Israel doesn't need more enemies. Um, and so, you know, I think that they are... Uh, uh, they are upset about this, and I think now it's compounded by very quickly the Biden administration has taken the wrong response in the aftermath of this. And the response is, instead of criticizing Iran, and Joe Biden hasn't spoken to that, they're leaking the fact that they're upset that the Israelis may overreact mm -hmm. to this existential threat, that they don't have a strategy, uh, and that they might use this to further escalation. And I will tell you, that's infuriating uh, to the Israelis as they, you know, as they face Again, an unprecedented historic uh, attack of this nature, and they're they're not real uh, uh, happy about being criticized and uh, and getting advice from you know the masters of disaster, uh, Biden, Blinken, uh, Sullivan, uh, and Austin. You know the architects of so many foreign policy failures who are now lecturing the Israelis about what to do in this threat. Are you expecting a response from Israel to Iran? Absolutely. Uh, and I think that there should be, there must be. Um, look, uh, Joe Biden doesn't have any red lines. They get crossed. Don't doesn't mean anything. But the Israelis do have red lines. And a kinetic attack by Iran into Israel uh, was a red line that must be answered. 
uh, Maria, the, 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 the idea of not overreact, if you don't respond to this forcefully, it normalizes it. It sends the message that these kinds of attacks are OK. So unfortunately, instead of working with uh, uh, Israel, I think Israel will act alone here. And, and they will consider and should consider a strong response that could target anything from uh, Iranian oil infrastructure, Iranian military installations, Iranian leadership, or perhaps Iranians' uh, nuclear facilities and nuclear program. You know, I think all of this highlights what a failure the Biden and before that the Obama uh, administration approaches to, to Iran really is. And these are the people that have been enriching Iran and um, encouraging them and allowing them to maintain a nuclear program. This is a country that does not deserve to have nuclear ambitions. Mm -hmm. And I think the Israelis will look seriously at removing this existential threat in that way. So you, you think that the Israelis believe that the Biden administration and its policies empowered Iran to attack Israel? Absolutely. I mean, it, it, hmm. billions and billions of dollars from the Biden administration in ransom for hostages yeah. and in sanctions relief uh, rebuilt the Iranian economy. The irony, Maria, is so many of those rockets and missiles that were shot down yesterday were paid for by the Biden administration. Hmm. Those were money that that the that the U.S. sent under the Biden administration uh, is you know w was used to. Uh, you know, rebuild the uh, Iranian military structure to use against Israel. And, wow. and uh, 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 Israel very clearly sees that and resents it. Real, real quick before you go, John, your reaction to the House reauthorizing FISA. Uh, obviously, you lived this during the Russia collusion lie when uh, the FBI spied on President Trump's officials and yeah. campaign uh, illegally. Yeah, so right up front, President Trump was right the other day when he said, you know, they used FISA Title I to spy on his campaign, and the FBI broke the law to do that. They also, the FBI, abused uh, Section 702 to spy on, uh, you know, Americans unlawfully. So right. the FBI did this to themselves. They have abused uh, this. Now, so I'm all for reforms. I will say this, 56 reforms, 57 reforms, whether you're talking about a warrant requirement, legislative solution isn't the process here. There was a warrant requirement uh, to spy on Carter right. Page, and the FBI broke that law four times to do that. That's not a that's not an opinion. That's a fact. Right. What really is needed here, Maria, is FBI leadership that says if you take away this important tool that we use to keep presidents informed about national security threats, we're going to dedicate our time to make sure that you spend a considerable period of your life in federal prison, and that's what's missing. We have a problem with leadership, and it needs to be fixed. Need consequences, of course. Uh, John Ratcliffe, thank you. Former Director of National Intelligence. You thank you, sir.